Thank you very much for having us today. Um, I'm Julian Fielding. I am a client experience manager here at Blackboard. Um, I used to work in universities and colleges as a lecturer and in various roles. Um, so uh, uh, it's a delight to be here showing a delightful product. Uh, Kenji, it was a lovely build up. Thank you. Um, I work with most clients after they've bought the product and see the benefits that they get from Ally. Um, and it's like uh, Rebecca was just saying there, it's not just about accessibility at all. In fact, many institutions are pitching Ally as a product that helps all learners uh, with digital capabilities, digital productivity, flexible learning, personalized learning, because uh, it, it can be used for all these things. And we're going to demonstrate. So I think I'm probably taking up my two minutes. Uh, we've already mentioned Joe. Joe's going to give you a demonstration of Ally for LMS in a moment. And then, as Kenji said, Joe, uh, Drew is going to talk about how it's worked at Glasgow University. And then I'll just close. I've put my email there. And um, I'm actually going to. Um, be in my virtual office at three o'clock. If anybody wants to come and ask questions later on, I'll be around and, and available. Um, we're going to look at Ally for LMS or VLE today, but there is also an Ally for web, which we won't talk about, but I particularly wanted to highlight that because I know through the uh, Pocklington Trust report, there was a certain amount of criticism um, of the sector and their websites not being very accessible. If you've not seen that, I'll share it in the chat in a moment. Um, and we also do Ally as a service, which is for homespun VLEs, but we're going to focus on Ally for LMS today. So I'm going to stop sharing there and then hand over to uh, Joe um, to talk. Do you want to share the slides, Joe, or do you want me to just share them and you direct, which is easier? Okay, just, you keep sharing over. You keep, keep sharing okay. and then that means we're not messing about with so many screens. So. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Joe Kinsley. Um, I'm a solutions engineer with Blackboard. Um, previous to working with Blackboard, I actually worked with Edinburgh University um, and Queen Margaret University. Um, and previous to that, I actually started in further education at Lauder College, which is now Andrew Carnegie College, and I was a member of SMOG back then, so I've kind of come first full circle back round to SMOG. So it's really nice to be here today to talk to you about Ally. <clears throat> so we're going to start with just a wee bit background to Ally and why the products come around. So obviously there's a lot of challenges that institutions face when they're trying to build an inclusive environment. And those challenges might be that the institution isn't aware really of how much of their content might be accessible. There's instructor awareness, which was mentioned before, that maybe instructors aren't um, aware of the significant you know, issues around content and the need for it to be accessible. Um, and then there's also the impact on students, which um, was mentioned through Rebecca's presentation earlier as well. Can you go forward, Joanne? Just I'm not going to spend too long on the slides because I'm aware of the time um, and just skip forward again. We're sending you these slides afterwards so you'll be able to have a look at them. So Ally has been around since 2017. We have worked with over 800 institutions um, and we're really committed to providing Ally to as many students as possible. Um, so they are working with other LMSs. They work with Canvas. Um, Ally works in Canvas and Moodle. Um, and in future, it might um, be developed to work even further. Just go forward again, Julian. Thanks. So the content, the course content workflow is designed to not change the instructor's workflow too, too drastically. The instructor will add course content to their course the content will then pass through the accessibility checklist um, and is scored against the accessibility checklist, which is based on the WCAG 2.1 AA standards. Um, and then that all happens in the background. And there's also some machine learning algorithms which will perform some structural and visual analysis. So things about maybe the header styles, uh, the, are the headers in a logical order, things like that. Um, and then the alternative formats are automatically generated. So the instructor doesn't have to do anything at that point. The, the, the alternative formats are all created in the background. 
At the same time, some instructive feedback is provided on the, the document that's been uploaded. And that's really to um, enable the instructor to check the accessibility and make improvements if required. The last part of Ali is the institutional reporting. So as we said, many institutions are challenges. They don't know how much of their content is accessible. So we have reporting capabilities at course level and institution level so that the content can be checked to, to see how, how much of the content is accessible. And obviously over time, it's hoped that that will improve. So the three core components of our we're going to look at is the alternative formats which can be produced, the instructor feedback, which, um, as we said, guides the instructors on how they can improve, and the reporting at course level and institution level. So at that, I'm going to dive into the demo. Um, let me just share my screen. Okay, can you see my... Yeah. You can, grand. Okay, so this is our demo environment, our middle demo environment, and we've got the Boost theme. It's very, very simple because obviously it's just our demo environment. So when a document is uploaded, let's just upload one first of all to show you the workflow. I'm just going to add a document into the resources. Let's drag one over here. Um, demo doc and I'm just going to save that so that's me done the upload part and in the background it's actually done it already it's really fast there but in the background that um, indicator sometimes doesn't come right away and the symbol sometimes takes a, a second or a minute or two to come but it's actually come right away there now what I was going to say is while that's processing, the, the file is still available to students. So I'm just going to switch to the student role so that we can see the student view first of all. So you can see I've got various documents here. This is actually all the same document, but basically what I've done is I've amended it as I've gone to improve it. So I'm just going to go with the first document. This is the student view. So the students don't see the accessibility score. That's the first main thing to know that it's only visible to instructors. What the student sees is the symbol to download alternative formats. So this is the alternative formats available for this file. So we've got the tagged PDF, the HTML, EPUB, which is great for if you're using an iPad, the electronic Braille version, so that's obviously for people who have got the electronic Braille display. Um, the audio version gives you the MP3 file, that's really handy if maybe you've got a long file and you want to go for a walk and listen to it. The Beeline Reader, which I'll show you, um, and obviously we've got the translated versions as well, and we've got around, I think it's about 70 or 80 languages there which um, you can tra translate your document to. So I've actually downloaded some of these beforehand just so that we, for quickness of um, just for quickness of demoing. So here is the Beeline Reader version of the document. Um, so you can see that the Beeline allows you to change the, the colors of the text for helping you with reading. So there's the nighttime version. Just check, can you tell me you're seeing that okay, Joanne? I've maybe not, is it sharing right? Yes, we can see that. I'm sorry, right. we okay. can indeed. Sure it's gone on top of the right screen. So yes, yeah, yeah. so the, the, the Beeline version of the night time, really good if, you, you know, if you're reading at night, it's, it's really good for the eye strain um, and it just allows you to change the contrast. So maybe people with dyslexia as well, they can change the colours to suit their reading preference. Uh, the EPUB version, just bring over the EPUB version. So obviously the EPUB version, if you're using an iPad, it's ideal for allowing you to quickly change things like the background color. You can quickly change the font to a different font if you want. You've got tools which allow you to highlight text. So you can highlight a section. We've also got tools which allow you to highlight and add notes. So that's what the Beeline version lets you do. So yeah, as I said, really useful to be able to do that. If you're a student, you want to be able to add notes or highlight sections, and you can also add bookmarks if it's a particularly long document. Uh, the MP3 version um, obviously just gives you the MP3 reading it out, and we've also, there is a translated version, which I'm just watching the time, so I'm not gonna go into that either and show you. What I'm gonna do now is just switch back to the instructor view just to 
now move on to look at the feedback that instructors see. So we've looked at that's the alternative formats view, a quick look at them. The instructor feedback view. So you can see, as I said, I've got the same document which has been uploaded. And actually what I've done is I've fixed it gradually. So it starts off as a red score, moves to amber and moves to green. So it's quite clear indication that the document is improving. When I click on the score, it tells me that the score in this document is only 22%. Um, and I can see what the issues are. The first issues that I'm looking at in this one is that the document contains images that are missing a description. So the alternative text is missing from these images. So what I can do now is I can download the document. I can add the alternative uh, text images, uh, messages into the document and upload it again, and the score would improve. Now, if I'm not sure on how to do that or what all this means, then there's a little, a little uh, link here to explain to you what is meant by an image description. And it tells you, the, you know, what you can do and why, why we have them. And then it's got a little bit here on how to add um, image descriptions to documents. And there's some instructions here on how to do it in Microsoft 365. So you can use the accessibility checker in Microsoft to do that. And there's even some guidelines here on how to write a good description. So if you're sort of thinking, well, how do you actually put a picture into words, then it actually talks you through a few examples here. So really helpful instructor feedback there for people who might be new to the whole area of how to, to make documents more accessible. So once I've added the alternative, um, the alternative, actually that one, I've, I've not done that one, that's the other way around, it's the, the headers order. So I, if, I, if I move down a bit further to one of the amber ones, then I can see this one's now up to 60%. It's the same document. It has got the alternative text added now. I can see what other issues are still missing. So it's containing tables that are missing headers. It's not got the language set. There's one there that's the insufficient contrast that was mentioned by Rebecca before. So it does pick up on the insufficient contrast in the document, which can be approved. And again, it gives you how to fix it and uh, what it means and why you would fix it. Again, you know, you can do all these things in one go. I've done it gradually. So I've kind of fixed it one at a time, just so you can see the improvement in a document. But obviously, you can just download it once, fix all the errors and then upload it so that finally you would get one that comes out at 100%, and that would be your finished document. So that is the instructor view of the um, feedback. Now, the new thing which has come since you last saw Ally is it now works on WYSIWYG content. So if I pop down here, I've got some WYSIWYG content. So the WYSIWYG editor, what you see is what you get. This is a new part which has just been added. Uh, let me just go into the settings on it, edit the settings. So you put your title and you can put your description in. And when you come to use the WYSIWYG editor, this one's actually got 94%. So it's actually quite, um, that one's not too bad. But it is telling me I've got an empty heading. And I can actually, with the WYSIWYG editor, fix it as I go. Um, so I can see the errors and I can correct them um, live. So it's also telling me I've got insufficient contrast in this text. And it allows me to fix this one. And I can see that there's three occurrences. So the other thing you can do is you can batch fix errors. So I can see at the top here, it's got text fragments with insufficient contrast. And I can see that there's actually three different sections where it's affected and they're all highlighted. So the, the red box shows me the three sections where there's insufficient contrast. So I could actually just choose the color here and apply it to all three occurrences and it will fix them all at once. So that's just taking the score right up to 75% just by fixing that issue. Now with the WYSIWYG editor, this image is missing a description and I can actually do it online. With the, the file before I had to download it, add the alternative text and upload it. But with this one, I can um, fix it on the fly and it's there. So um, group of people sitting around a table. I'm just gonna add that in just now. And there's me up to 100%. So the WYSIWYG editor improvements are really massive, I think, in what they've done with um, making content improved. 
and it works in the book. So it also works in the book. If you're using the book tool with the chapters, then you can also do the settings and you get the same thing again as you had in the WYSIWYG editor. I just need to make my window a little bit bigger. You'll see the accessibility score comes up there for the chapter with the same uh, guidance where you can fix it and apply it. Okay, so that is the instructor feedback side of the Ally tool. The last thing that we're going to touch on is the reporting. So in the course reports, if I go down the left-hand side menu here, I have an accessibility report for the course level. Um, and I can see here that I've got 28 documents within this uh, course. Um, I can see the easiest fixes. So I can pop in here and see all the things which are easy to fix um, and I can get more detail on them. So I could actually focus on fixing them first. So those are the ones which all need image alternative text added, um, or I can just work my way down them all. The ones which are the lowest scoring, you can look at as well, because these might be ones which, you know, they've got 0%, that's a really low score. So that could actually have quite a big impact on students if they're that low in accessibility. So you might also want to target the low scoring ones. Um, but you get this overview of all of the, the files in the course which need fixing. Um, now, the last thing I was going to do is show you institutional level reports. Obviously, this is a very quick um, view of everything. And if you want a deeper dive at some point, then you can do that. But let me just, I need to log in as admin now just to bring this up. Okay, so on the dashboard here, I can go to the settings. So this is an institutional level, so admin level stuff we're talking here. And we go down to reports and get the accessibility report. And this gives me a report across all of the courses. Um, so I can see all of the files which have been added and the overall percentage um, for accessibility. Um, compared to the WYSIWYG content. Obviously, there's not a lot of WYSIWYG content in our demo area. Um, and also, I can scroll down and see the total number of courses, the total number of pieces of content that have been created, and the overall accessibility score of all of the content for the institution. So that's where you might have a day where like Blackboard does a improve your content day. So you might look at that and say, okay, this year we're at 59%, which is accessible. Let's try and improve on that for next year and get the overall accessibility up. And again, similar to the course reports, you can see all of the pieces of content which have accessibility issues, and you can drill down into actual where the course is, and you can even drill down from there into what the files are which have got the issues. So that's the institutional reporting at a very quick look. That is my time up for sure. So I'm going to pass over now on to Drew just so we can get a chance to hear from the, the sort of client side of using Ally or Jimmy. Are you talking there? Thanks, Joe. Um, can everyone see my uh, presentation? Um, yeah, good. Yeah, so hello, my name's um, Drew McConnell. I'm the I'm an information officer within information services at University of Glasgow. Uh, you see a picture of Glasgow there and notice it's not raining. Um, just, I mean, the, 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 we've been using Ally for about a year and a half now, and actually it's been, it's been really easy and really straightforward, and it's done some great things here, which I'm, I'm just about to uh, cover. Um, the WCAG regulations have been mentioned a few times now, so I'm not really going to go into all of this detail here, but I guess the, the thing I wanted to draw out was the, the level that we have to meet to meet these regulations, which is, as, as previously mentioned by a few people now, is WCAG 2.1 at level AA, with a few exceptions. Um, rather than tell people that that's what they need to do with their content, um, we took a different, slightly different approach, and I've heard also that mentioned today. We've taken usability and accessibility and attempted to harmonise them. And actually, 
accessible content is better content. So collect correctly structured content with meaningful links in it provides a better user experience. And that's the approach that, that we've taken. Accessible content is better for everyone, improves the experience for everyone. And as a matter of fact, uh, the, 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 the requirements here have been things that the uh, web people have been going on about for 10 years using proper, you know, proper structure. And we're trying to get to a place where we're accessible by design. We're trying to almost teach what it is to do accessible content. And we've also taken this as a, our approach has been that this is a journey. We don't need to get to the end all at once. We need to travel towards making our stuff um, um, accessible so that you know people don't feel overwhelmed, particularly academics who are usually pretty busy people. Um, so, so to enable us to do that, we're using we're using this acronym here, Sculpt, which is from uh, Worcestershire uh, County Council. And uh, you can see it, you can read it yourself there. It's about structure, it's about color and contrast, it's about use of images, it's about using meaningful links, plain English. That's not technically part of the accessibility regulations, but hey ho, I'm all for that, plain English. And uh, table structure. And, and really we're trying to we're trying to say, if you learn these things in your approach to content, then this works for any kind of content. It's not any particular kind of content. This works for everything. And it's not exactly rocket science, is it? We're not, it's not hugely complicated this to learn. So um, moving over to Ally. So as I said, we've been using Ally for about you know, just over 18 months now. And um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about that experience and how that's helped us here. Um, in terms of the the installation of Ally onto Moodle, um, here's how we found it. It was a piece of cake. It was easy. It's three plugins. Um, we actually felt, and I hope the Ally people aren't listening here, that, that Ally made a bit more of a song and dance about it than it really needed. It was really straightforward to put in. Uh, and of course, we, we've got a great Moodle team here as well, and everybody knew what they were doing, and it was fine. There was absolutely no problem. Switched it on, and that was that. Um, so, in terms of how, how our first year using Ally, so there was an all. I'm not going into all the communications and the um, buy-in and the working groups that we had to do here. I'm just going to focus on the outcomes. And um, in year one, um, we had. 20,000 courses, uh, being over 20,000 courses being used by Ally. And uh, that was up 57% on the previous year. Not surprising because it was during lockdown. Um, the content, almost 1.6 million pieces of content was checked by Ally. And again, that was up 66%. Again, probably not surprising. Our overall score was 74.6%, which was up 17% on the previous year. So. What, what I'm saying is, is our student experience improved by 17% because that content is much more accessible and much more usable by uh, the student body. Um, here's a list of what our top issues are. And most of this stuff here, this is all sculpt. It's mostly structure. There's some uh, use of uh, um, links. There's also some um, images stuff and a couple of bits of I think there's a bit here, or that's maybe another one. There's a bit here on um, um, tables, uh, contrast as well. So the, the, they're all sculpt issues. You know, the, the, all our issues are based around things that are easy to fix. And you saw um, from Joe's presentation how easy those things are to fix using Ally. Um, so, oh, this was a just in case. Uh, one, but you, you've seen that. This is what it looks like for a member of staff, and they have this uh, uh, user uh, dial here that, that they can see where the how the score's been. Um, we were asked quite a bit about uh, training and uh, by academics what sort of training that we were going to provide for Blackboard Ally when we were putting it in, and uh, we said um, click the instructor feedback icon that I just showed you and do what it says. And that consisted, that was our entire training suite for Blackboard Ally because it is really that easy to use. It tells you how to fix your stuff. 
it tells you how to do it. It tells you why you need to do it as well. So we didn't really feel it was necessary for any training given we were going down this sculpture route as well and trying to teach people. So once once you've done once you've fixed the structure in the document a few times, you, you're going to do it that way anyway. You're going to start doing accessibility by design because it's not really that hard to learn. Um, and you saw that as well. Um, this is um, what it looked like for a student. And um, you can see uh, the, the types of alternative formats. We've got the translate thing switched off because we do quite a lot of language courses here. So having that on is maybe not the best idea. Um, and, and let me just tell you, you, you you've, you've not lived until you've listened to your PowerPoint presentation as an MP3. Um, you really must try that. So. Alternative formats use here, and uh, I don't know how I'm doing for time, but I just want to tell you a sh very short story. I was at uh, Digifest in 2020, and Ally had a stand there, and I'd heard about it and thought, oh, yeah, no, I'm a very cynical person, so I was like, yeah, sure. And I went to see them anyway, and the guy showed me the alternative format tool, and he showed me how it worked, and he showed me how easy it was, and he was going to move on to the instructor part, and I said, stop there. I said, we're having this just because of the alternative format tool, because it takes out the requirement from the regulations about alternative formats. The vast majority of requests for alternative formats will come through Moodle, or in our case, VLEs. And that this, this kills that stone dead. Um, so in the first year, we've had 127,000 uh, and plus uh, downloads of uh, alternative formats. Uh, that's over half our student population there, that figure. Uh, and that's how many courses have had a download. Um, or at least one download. So that's that's pretty good use, I think. And that's 127,873 alternative formats that weren't done the year before. So, you know, even that kind of, I think is really good. Um, the formats that get downloaded the most, and, and this is quite, um, well, I think it's extraordinary. Tag PDFs, far and away, the most downloaded alternative format, 85,000, and um, followed by HTML. And you can see there's a smattering of uh, some of the other things. Um, this year so far, we've had 110,000 downloads, uh, 12, over 12,000 unique users. I think we're, uh, we, might, we, might, we might beat that first year there. I'm not quite sure, because we're now in, in March. We'll see, we'll see how it goes, but yeah, it looks like it's gonna. Um, so this is uh, year two. So this far, well, up to last Friday, um, the course number's down considerably over the same period, not surprising. Uh, also, the amount of content, there's half a million pieces of content, though, and their score is up 8% over the previous year. So something's working here. Something's working here. So whether it's, it's our approach or whether it's Ally or whether it's a combination of all those things, I think our accessibility score for, for the content that's in the middle is increasing year on year. So that's 17% uh, the first year and 8% thus far this year. It does tend to trend downwards, I have to say. But, you know, it'll still be up at the end of the year. So in conclusion here, we have senior buy-in here. That was one of the things that we had that I've, I know I've spoken to quite a few universities and they, they've not had that made things difficult. The, the Moodle team here is awesome. So that made everything easy. Most people here want to do the right things. So people wanted to engage with this. They want to make their content accessible. And, you know, it's really about that. If you've got that, that's half the battle. As I've said before, we're not asking people to do a, a exactly a rocket science thing. It's pretty straightforward. And then I think most importantly, by conflating user experience and accessibility, it becomes about improving the user experience rather than meeting a regulation, rather than meeting WCAG 2.1. It's about making content better for everyone. Um, and Blackboard Allies really made that very easy to do. It's really easy to use. It was easy to install. Um, the alternative format tool is also awesome. Um, I've told you that story already. So that's that's me.